I'm so tired of my self-loathing the same routine. I need a reinvention. I gotta find Today I'm going to show you the best way I found to make a, an upholstered seat cushion for the inside of an old antique bathtub. For this project, we're collaborating with our friend Brian, also known as Curb Stalker on Instagram. He's converting this bathtub into some seating for a local restaurant near him. So we are going to do the upholstered part. You can see he's already cut out the inside where people will move it to sit. So we are faced with a couple of challenges here. The first one is that the base of this bathtub is concave. So if we were just to make a foam cushion and put it in it, it would sink down and this curve up here would become uncomfortable seating. And we definitely don't want that. So the first thing that we had to do was make a substrate for the bottom that would give us a nice flat surface for a cushion. Now, the part that I'm going to be working on today is the actual cutting of the cushion. The challenge that I face is obviously the rounded edges here, but I also have a bevel on this side that I have to match or else the cushion isn't going to look natural inside. So I have developed a measuring technique that I'm hoping is gonna work that will help me find out what this dimension and what that bevel angle is so that I can fit a nice custom cut cushion right inside. So we'll see if it works, wish me luck. So Crosby has actually already carved out the substrate for me and I couldn't tell you how he did it, but I can tell you that he is magical because it did work. So I'm gonna place this in here so you can see how it fits. Try to make sure that it will come right down here to this edge. And of course there's a, a gap here that we'll need to deal with when we work on the upholstered part of it. But he did manage to get the right shape here in the curve. It goes all the way flat to the back and these curved corners match up nicely too. So the job that's left for me to do then is to cut the foam to fit the substrate and to also fit that widened bevel on the curved end of this piece of plywood. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace the substrate that Crosby made so that I have a shape to work with. And you can see he made these lines on here. Those were for his own measurement purposes, but they're also gonna prove to be useful for me when I want to extend the measurements off the end of this plywood. So I'm going to, at the end where I need to extend it, put a mark where all of these lines are so that I can use them as a reference when attempting to do the next part which I've never done before. So we'll see how it goes. You also notice that I moved it a little bit away from both edges. I use a bandsaw to cut this foam out so that I can get a nice clean edge around the marks that I made. So I'm going to do a rough cut of this shape out of this foam, and then we're gonna take it to the bandsaw and make a more precise cut. So here's where it starts to get a little bit wishy-washy. I have to find a way to measure this bottom distance from this top distance at the thickness of the foam so that I can figure out what that bevel is gonna be and how much longer this cushion is gonna be on top. So I hacked together a little way for me to attempt to measure this out and we're gonna see if it's gonna work. Crosby cut me a wood block at the thickness of the foam. So we're going to use this to gauge our height and we're going to align it with the very edge of this wood here. Now I marked my foam with these marks already so I'm going to measure the distance from the top of this block to the edge of the tub at these intervals and use that to mark the top of my foam so that I know exactly where to cut it. And I'm hoping that this works. Using this combination square and this block as a height guide and these lines as an edge guide, I'm going to line my combination square up with, the, with this edge of the block, push the ruler all the way to the edge, make sure that it's just touching, make sure that this block is flush with the edge on this side, 
the ruler is touching. And I'm going to mark where the edge of the plywood would be at this height. And it looks like we got four and 13 sixteenths. So I'm gonna write that along this line. Four and 13 sixteenths. <clears throat> I'm gonna do the same for every line on this block. Had enough of my town and friends. It's time to do some living someplace I've never been. Now I'm playing. So here's a bit of a close up of the measurements that I made, and I just I went a little bit outside and I probably will also cut it on the bandsaw a little bigger than I need it because I can always make it smaller but I can't make it bigger after it's been cut. Shoots and ladders in a new regime Been studying, keeping my conscience clean I learned the rules of when and where to go Been studying who I should get to know And we talk about how to make a difference We talk about changing this town Then we talk about which party we are going to And how to make an entrance So now what we need to do is find the angle of the bevel from the top of the edge of the seat cushion to the bottom of the seat cushion that's supposed to be flush with the substrate. As you can see, that was a complete bust. One of the things I didn't factor in was that it looks as though the depth of the cushion is deeper towards the back than it, than it is at the bottom. So the total width up here is actually wider than the substrate. So we have to find out what that dimension is. And then um, we do still have like a huge gap here. So we're going to fill this with some foam and we're going to use this as a template to make our final piece. It occurred to me a minute after starting to take measurements that if I move the foam out flush to the substrate that I could fill in the gaps around the tub with strips of paper. After taping it down, I'd be able to use it as a template to trace an exact shape of the top of the cushion to the tub so that it would fit more accurately. I'm so tired it's my fifth night out in seven days. I'm not that much for working. I find it's underpaid. I got some money set aside for drugs. Let's go and get some ponies to level out our bugs. So through some trial and error and about $450 worth of foam, we were finally able to cut this piece of foam to fit the bathtub and to match all the bevels. After we cut it, we marked the substrate with the foam so that we knew exactly where to glue it once we took the pieces out of the tub, um, put the glue on and put them back together. So this part was extremely important into making sure that we glued the substrate to the right spot on the foam so it would still fit in the bathtub the way it's supposed to fit. I could not be happier with the way that this fits inside this bathtub. With the batting on it, there's a nice rounded, clean feel all the way around looks like it was made to have foam in there comes out flush at the edge looks amazing the last and final challenge of this project is to custom fit the pattern of the fabric to fit the cushion you could very easily wrap and staple this cushion and fit it into the bathtub and it will look fine. But because of the rounded areas and the slopes and the unique shape, it would actually pleat and bulk up in a lot of areas and it might look a little ill-fitting when you're done. So we're going to make sure we take the time to custom fit the fabric pattern to the foam so that when we're done, it looks nice and clean. I'm so tired of my self-loathing the same routine. I need a reinvention, I gotta find a scene. Had enough of my town and friends.
It's time to do some living someplace I've never been. I have all my panels cut and I'm ready to start pinning it together to make sure that it is fit well to the foam um, and that I don't have to make any adjustments. But I just want to share something fun with you guys that you might not know about. So the fabric that we're using here is velvet. And velvet, when not placed in the same nap direction, actually comes across as two different colors, as you can see here. So when you are sewing a cushion together or any upholstering anything with velvet, you want to make sure that your nap is all running in the same direction. Because if you don't, you're going to get a two-tone effect, which is also something you can play with artistically, if that's what you're into. But for the purposes of this seat, we actually want the fabric to be the same color all the way around. So now you can see the fabric looks exactly the same. But if we turn it, two completely different colors. Keep that in mind when you're making your patterns. I have my pattern set and pinned. I've actually given myself a couple flexible areas here where you can see this folds over. As I'm pulling to tighten everything, I'll be able to adjust around that slope. But I'm actually going to take it a step further. And I know that in order for this to fit this slope perfectly, that this panel is actually going to have to be cut on a radius so that we don't get any pleating. Now, you can have a little pleating in there. Nobody is ever going to see it because it's going to be permanently fastened to the inside of this tub. But for me, a nice clean fit is going to be best. Now you can see the new shape of this panel of fabric is going to be slightly radiused at the top to meet that slope. Now we're going to take this party to the sewing machine. So I have um, my top panel of the cushion and I also have the sloped panel that I just created. I'm starting with this panel because it is the only panel that I have on this piece that is custom fit to this end. The rest of them I can place around um, and they'll fit perfectly. So I have marked um, my fabric, if you can see, with a little notch to show me where I need to start the sloped panel when I sew it. So I'm just going to get this set up and I have allowed myself a half inch seam allowance and I'm just gonna start sewing. If I am honest with you, I'll have to admit that I am prone to talk shit just to get with some girls who don't care, no conscious display. But they wear the right clothes and they act like they know better. Yeah, they act like they know. No!